Adjusting oil burners for safe and efficient performance requires the use of combustion test equipment, commonly referred to as efficiency kits. While some people believe that they can adjust oil burners by eye, it has been proven that using combustion efficiency test equipment is the only way to effectively adjust burners. In addition, the proper use of combustion efficiency test equipment actually reduces both the need for service and the amount of time required to accurately service, troubleshoot, and adjust heating equipment. There are two types of combustion efficiency testing equipment. Manual testing equipment, commonly referred to as wet kits, and continuous sampling digital electronic analyzers. Regardless of the type of testing equipment you use, it's critical that you read, understand, and follow the manufacturer's instructions. These instruments will only produce reliable results if they are used, stored, and maintained properly. Be aware of the operating ranges of your equipment and protect it during extreme weather by bringing it inside when you complete your shift. See the manufacturer's instructions for details regarding pre-use checks and maintenance intervals. A manual kit includes a draft gauge, a smoke tester, a stack thermometer, a CO2 tester, and a slide chart to determine combustion efficiency. An electronic test kit consists of an electronic analyzer with a built-in pump that draws flue gases through a series of sensors. An optional printer may also be included. And since digital combustion efficiency analyzers are sensitive to carbon buildup, it's necessary to first use a separate smoke tester to adjust the unit for zero smoke. Nora recommends that efficiency testing be performed when a new burner or oil tank is installed, during each preventive maintenance tune-up, after each oil burner repair, and, in some cases, before beginning to service the burner. Note, some analyzers will not give accurate measurements if they are cold. In cold weather, it's best to bring the efficiency kit into the building while you're performing service so that it has time to warm up before being used. If the analyzer is cold, run one or two tests to warm it up before using the reading. Unless a properly located test hole is already present, a 3 8 inch hole should be drilled into a straight piece of the flue pipe near the breech of the unit, on the appliance side of, and at least 6 inches from, the draft regulator. When testing with a wet kit, two holes are recommended to reduce the amount of time required for testing. Although these holes do not need to be sealed, Nora recommends that a screw, cap, or approved high temperature sealant be inserted into the holes after testing is completed. Most new units have a test hole in the flame observation door. If the unit you are testing does not have one, you'll need a small piece of sheet metal with a hole drilled into it for over-the-fire measurements. Unless you are testing the unit before any troubleshooting is performed, the unit should be adjusted to the manufacturer's specifications before starting the test. The heating unit air tube, fan, and air intake slots should be clean and any air leaks in the unit should be sealed. The firing assembly, air shutter, nozzle, pump pressure, and electrodes should be checked and adjusted to specifications. Once the burner is running, the flame should be inspected through the observation door if possible. It should be well defined and should not impinge on any appliance surfaces. If everything appears to be fine with the combustion process, the burner should operate for a few minutes before the efficiency test is started. When doing a manual combustion efficiency test using a wet kit, it's important to do the test steps in the proper order. That is, measure the initial stack temperature. Measure the draft, both at the breech and over the fire. Do a smoke test. Obtain a CO2 reading. 
do a final stack temperature measurement, and finally, calculate the unit's combustion efficiency. Slide the holding clip out to the end of the thermometer stem, insert the tab into the top of the sampling hole, and push the thermometer in so the tip is in the center of the flue pipe. Operate the burner until the thermometer rises no faster than 3 degrees per minute. Leave the thermometer in the hole as you perform other tests. Note, to minimize the possibility of condensation in a conventional chimney, gross stack temperature should be at least 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If the stack temperature is too low, double check to be sure the unit is set to manufacturer's specifications. To begin the draft test, you must zero out the draft gauge, then check for sufficient draft at the breach and for the manufacturer's recommended draft over the fire. Typically, negative 0.01 to negative 0.02 inches of water column for residential units that operate with negative draft. A differential of more than 0.05 inches between the two readings indicates heavy sooting or air leaks in the appliance. If the draft is not in line with the manufacturer's recommendations, adjust the draft regulator until the proper draft is achieved. Smoke is measured from 1 to 10. When the reading is between 0 and 1, we refer to it as a trace of smoke. To test for smoke, first insert smoke test paper into the tester. Then insert the tube into the flue pipe and slowly pull 10 full strokes, waiting 1 or 2 seconds between pumps. Remove the test paper and compare the spot to the standard smoke scale. If a yellow oily spot appears on the paper, there is unburned oil in the flue gas sample. Check air and combustion head settings and adjust as needed. If the spot reads a trace of smoke or more, open the air shutter slightly until you bring the smoke reading down to zero. If the initial spot reads zero smoke, close the air shutter slightly and retest until you get a trace of smoke. Once you have a trace, Open the air shutter slightly until you get the reading back down to zero. Note, many service technicians obtain zero smoke on the first attempt and then continue to the next step, measuring CO2. Any time an initial reading of zero smoke is obtained, you must adjust to a trace of smoke and then bring it back down to zero, or you may be allowing too much excess air which can lead to lower CO2 cooler flames, higher stack temperatures, and increased carbon monoxide production. Always adjust for smoke and then open the air shutter to adjust to zero smoke. Before using the CO2 analyzer, you must first wet the instrument by tipping it over. Next, hold it upright and depress and release the valve on top several times. Loosen the lock nut on the sliding scale and adjust the scale until the number zero lines up with the meniscus or center of the fluid. Then tighten the lock nut. After inserting the sampling tube into the flue, place the rubber connector at the end of the pump hose on top of the valve and push it down. Squeeze and release the bulb 18 times, releasing the valve while the bulb is still collapsed on the 18th squeeze. Then remove the sampling tube from the flue. Once the sample has been taken, tip the analyzer over and back two times, allowing gas to bubble completely through the fluid. Hold it at a 45 degree angle until all of the fluid has drained before returning it to an upright position to read the scale. Depress and release the valve on top of the analyzer several times to be sure that the zero setting has not changed. If it has, readjust the scale and repeat the test. If it hasn't, record the reading. Readings below 9% or above 13% indicate the potential of generating smoke and soot. If the reading is below 9% and the unit is more than 25 years old, the customer should be advised about the advantages of upgrading the system. If the reading is above 13%, Open the air shutter slightly until you get the reading to 13% or less. Although you measured the stack temperature at the beginning of the efficiency test, adjustments made during the testing process can increase or decrease stack temperature. 
Read the temperature on the stack thermometer after you've completed the CO2 test and deduct the ambient temperature to calculate the net stack temperature. Using the Combustion Efficiency Slide Ruler, adjust the slide so that the figure you've recorded appears in the small window marked Net Stack Temperature. Then move the small vertical slide until the arrow points to the CO2 reading. The combustion efficiency will appear in the window. Electronic combustion analyzers use advanced methods of measuring flue gas composition and temperature through a single probe. A pump within the instrument draws a flue gas sample through a series of sensors. These electronic analyzers are capable of measuring oxygen percentage, carbon monoxide, draft, flue gas temperature, and ambient temperature. In addition, they calculate CO2, excess air, and CO air free. The only thing they cannot measure is smoke. As a first step in determining combustion efficiency, perform a smoke test and adjust the unit to operate at zero smoke as shown previously. Connect the flue gas sampling probe assembly to the analyzer per manufacturer's instructions. Start the analyzer and allow it to complete the self-check process. Insert the probe into the center of the flue to check for sufficient draft at the breech and then verify you have the manufacturer's recommended draft over the fire. If necessary, adjust the draft regulator until the readings are acceptable. If you adjusted the draft regulator, repeat the smoke test procedure to assure that the unit is still operating at zero smoke. Reinsert the probe into the flue to obtain combustion readings. Optimum oxygen levels are 4% to 7%. This equates to a manual CO2 measurement of 10 to 12.5 percent. Low or high O2 readings indicate that the fuel-air mixture is out of adjustment and the unit may be generating carbon monoxide. Adjust the unit to bring the readings in line with manufacturer's specifications. Once you've made your final adjustments and verified draft, temperature, and O2 readings, check for CO while the probe is still in the flue pipe. In general, a CO reading under 100 is acceptable. If CO is over 100, check for flame impingement or mechanical malfunctions. However, you should always follow manufacturer's guidelines for the particular unit you are servicing. Because each squeeze of a wet kit bulb represents a different snapshot of the flue gas and then blends all those snapshots together into one reading, manual testing takes more time and gives a less accurate reading of burner performance than an electronic analyzer. Electronic instruments are much quicker, sample continuously, and allow you to see the results change as you make burner adjustments. For example, Suppose you perform a manual test and find that the CO2 is excessive. You must then adjust the air setting and repeat the test a number of times until the reading is acceptable. In the same situation, with an electronic efficiency tester, you simply adjust the air setting and watch the continuous readout until you get an acceptable reading. Once you've completed testing and adjusting the unit, print two copies of the combustion test results, seal the testing holes, remove all of your equipment, and make sure that you've left the work area clean. Before you leave the job site, take a few moments to explain the test results to the customer, and then make appropriate recommendations that will help to reduce their energy consumption while allowing them to continue enjoying all the benefits of oil heat. As you've seen, Adjusting oil heat systems for maximum efficiency requires much more than simply eyeballing the flame. The regular use of combustion efficiency test equipment is one of the major factors differentiating <laughs> part-changing soot suckers from professional oil heat service technicians.